What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New video. Today's video is going to be about Pelican Bay. As I've said in different videos, um, there's there's this whole mystique about that that prison. Um, there's an aura, I guess, about that prison when you hear the name. People hear the name. Um, I don't think they understand the difference. They think it's all the same. They don't understand there's the shoe, which is C and D facilities. And then there's the main line, which are A and B facilities, right? Well, today, <clears throat> I'm going to do my best to try to paint the picture for you. So, going to Pelican Bay, first time was in the 90s, right? And I'm not going to lie, being sent up there, you knew you were going to the Harvard or MIT of criminality in California. You were going to learn from the most notorious criminals how to be a better criminal if they saw the potential in you. So going up there the first time, they used to, they used to allow you when you're on the bus and they call your name, you stand up. The guy that you wanted to sell up with, the guy you wanted to sell up with, just all he needed to do was stand up with you. You go to the, you're the first one you get to the water. You're still on the bus, and they say you're so and so. Yeah, state your CDC number. You say your CDC number, and they'll ask, "This is who you want to sell up with?" Yeah, okay. They'll ask him, "Hey, what's your CDC number? Name and CDC number." He says his name and CDC number. You want to sell up with this guy? Yeah, go ahead and take it out. And you and that dude will get off the bus, and then. Well, let me just, before I get to that, you get off the bus. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up is this was still a time where you ain't going to be selling wolf tickets. If there's a problem, you have an issue with somebody and you feel the issue needs to be addressed through the legends, don't go to a different cell than me. This is getting the same cell. Let's Let's go ahead and put it on the table and let them decide. That's serious. You get off the bus and there's going to be a bunch of COs standing there. It's two to each one convict, right? So you step off and they're going to tell you, go ahead and step in. You would step in and as soon as you step in, you see a white corridor. To the right, I believe was uh when you first go in, there was a metal detector. I, I don't I don't remember ever having to walk through it. It was there though. And you're gonna walk in and you're gonna face the wall. They're gonna tell you face the wall. COs are gonna be talking to each other, bullshitting. You're gonna move down the line, they're gonna tell step go ahead and step down a little bit. But when you step in Pelican Bay shoe, this is the shoe. When you step in a Pelican Bay shoe, the further in the corridor you get, the more it feels like you're actually going underground. You don't, there, there's no windows anywhere. Um, it's just long, white corridors. On the corridors, you'll see doors, right? And those are where the pods are going to be. So, you know, you start with C1. Two, so it'll be C1, 2, 3. I think that's all on the left side, if I remember right, and then it goes around. But anyways, um, C facility has 12 blocks, 12 units. D facility had 10. So when it's your turn, you're going to get into a, they're going to strip you out. Once you're stripped out, you're going to get to your cell, right? They're going to escort you and your celly to your cell. Back then, you would go to one block. C1 was orientation for the shoe. Once you would see classification, 
normally as far as the the raza from southern california um we would refuse committee what the hell am i going to go to committee for just clear me and tell me what cell you're going to move me to next um we didn't exit the cell usually for any type of hearings <clears throat> pelican Bay shoe once you hit your regular unit um whoever is in that unit with you excuse me in that section that pod it's actually a pod it's four cells on the bottom four on the top yeah and most of the guys in there are going to be single cell right so you could if you're single cell due to a valid gang validation or something the way they used to do it back then um well in the 90s you could still get a cell it was around that time because all the murders in uh 96 and 97 in the shoe where they started saying they wanted guys that were validated to be uh, uh single cell but i just want you to understand that when you hit a pod that's where you're gonna live until you're released from the shoe and the guys that were validated that might be their house or in the back in the days that was their pad for 10 years 15 years maybe they knew, moved to another section another pod in the same unit and it's necessary because imagine imagine being in the same cell for two years with the same dudes around you the way they fucking blow their nose will start to irritate you you know their program in pelican bay shoe everyone knows everyone's program because it's dead quiet in there you know when your neighbor gets up to piss you know when the dude upstairs gets up to piss you hear everything you know when he's in a bus down you know when he's bird bathing you know everything he does and he knows everything you do and everyone in there knows everybody's program and as soon as one person deviates from the program there's a red flag that's one of the reasons why people don't go to hearings Pelican Bay Shoe was a place where you come to understand who you are because you're in here the whole time. You're not on the yard running around hustling, um, trying to make things happen, getting into the shit, whatever. No, you're in your cell. And if you're smart, you're sharpening the best weapon you have. That's your brain. You're engaging in conversation with people that you know have the game that will make you successful behind those walls. You're building relationships with those in there, legends, as well as those that you know are have a foot in the door to become legends and you're building relationships with them. You're exchanging ideas. They're seeing, is this person worth grooming? Is this dude a slug? Is this dude, believe me, they see who you are ASAP because they stay back there and regular bottles just keep going in and out, in and out. It was the most respectful place I ever did time. And I'm going to tell you right now, California prisons, um, respect is paramount. In the shoe, you could see a dude, doesn't matter what faction, you could see a dude and look at him and he looks like physically he's not threatening. Maybe he even looks kind of goofy to you. And when you ask somebody, hey, who, hey, who is that? Eh? He's a legend. He's a legend who has piled up bodies, who has accumulated a whole lot of money, generated a lot of income. He's a cold killer. And that's why I laugh. Like people that have never been around legends of any faction. Remember back then, you know, getting out of the shoe and you, you, you know, you talk to a, a younger homie and they're like, hey, you're in the bay. Hey, what do they look like? What? look like us, look like you, look like human beings. Hey, why would you think? 
<clears throat> but Pelican Bay shoe actually was also somewhere where if you weren't sharpening that weapon, if you weren't keeping your brain occupied, exercising it daily, your brain will start to eat you up. People start getting paranoid. You know, I noticed bottles that would start to lose their mind. They get OCD up there. You know, they could see a piece of trash on the tier and they have to fish it in. And again, everybody's noticing. Everybody's listening. You hear somebody throw a line out and you know, they're not telling somebody, hey, pull it. Like, Orale, who's this vato fishing with? Look out the door and you see there's a fucking piece of paper this big, eh? This big. Trash. He can't take it. It is fucking his whole day up. That little tiny piece of trash. There would be dudes up there that were extremely um, violent in their past, well-known, um, And next thing you know, they're smearing shit all over their bodies. Pelican Bay shoe, you know, I I remember, you know, the, the, it seemed like there was always this thing where dudes that did shoes but didn't go to Pelican Bay, they always felt like the dudes from the Bay that came from the Bay that did all their shoe time in the Bay looked at them like less than. That wasn't always the case, of course you know, sometimes it was. But that usually was when somebody was bragging about something that was like, come on now, homie. But I will say that Corcoran Shoe, when they had the integrated yards and there was wartime, vicious, vicious. But see, the difference between Pelican Bay Shoe and Corcoran Shoe was this. Corcoran Shoe was physical. The hardships were physical. Pelican Bay was mental. What's worse? A scar to the brain or a scar to the flesh? You know, you can, a bruise goes away. But people that, for some reason, lose the ability to cope with the mental uh, deprivation of Pelican Bay, they don't come back from that. You can't put a cast on that. You can't put a bandage or Band-Aid. There's no Tylenol. Nothing's in the hell. He's gone. He's only going to get worse. Then leaving Pelican Bay, shoe, and let's say you go to B-Yard. Um, I've already said, I, like to me, every one of the 180 yards is dead serious. Every one of them. Um, I believe the most violent was, uh, high desert. I've said that I was never there, but I, I say that because there were things that would go down in high desert that wouldn't go down in Pelican Bay or New Folsom, you know, the more established older 180s. However, the Pelican Bay riot, the famous one of 2000, that was basically on some high desert type thinking and, and politicking. I will say that. But, and again, I, I don't know, maybe someone, you know, with another platform, another, another group could say. But I know as far as the Raza from Southern California, when you got out of Pelican Bay Shoe and you hit Pelican Bay, or if you came from reception, you were a new booty, never been nowhere, and you hit Pelican Bay B facility, it was in the air. It was serious. And the, the thing was, the cold thing was, because everybody on that yard, except for the guys that come from uh, reception, 95% will say of the yard, maybe 90% of the yard, as far as the Southern Raza, all came out of Pelican Bay Shoe. They all met somebody. A lot of them are connected to somebody. And so it's not like, you know, you, you hit other yards and there's, there's dudes there that are hitters that are connected. But in the Bay, it's pretty much your best, your best bet is to assume everybody there is connected. 
unless you know this dude is on his first number and just came through reception, treat everyone as if they're connected and show them the respect of that. It was a different place, man. Um, I could say that Pelican Bay, because it was so far, the program was pretty smooth because we didn't have the, the, the massive influx of drugs that you have in other prisons. It was, it was just so fucking far away, you know? Um, and believe it or not, uh, the whole drug thing in prison, that is the, the main source of violence in there, I believe. I've seen more dudes get washed up over drugs than probably anything. It's rare when dudes come in with bad paperwork. You know, and when they do, that's usually nipped in the bud pretty quick. But a drug habit, that's different, man. Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse into um, what Pelican Bay was like. You know, I see it now. You Google Pelican Bay now. And and I see, you know, they got like level twos or level ones in the shoe now where the shoe was. They're housing like level ones and twos. They have a, a table in the pod now and they have a TV and all that. And I wonder what it feels like for them to be in there. If they feel the ghosts, because it's guaranteed there's a lot of ghosts in there. A lot of people were killed in there. I wonder if they feel it. I wonder if it, if it still feels the same, even though they probably get more access to being out of the cells. I wonder if it feels the same. The yard's still the same. You guys can Google Pelican Bay shoe and you see what the yard looks like. Everything in that fucking place was was just drab. Was was it was it was it was built in a way to deprive you of something. But anyways, that's my video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you did, do me a favor, hit the likes, share it with someone who you think would enjoy it, and leave a comment. Everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.